I'm gonna tell you about how I got invited to work at what I think is probably one of the best advertising studios in Europe, all right? I'm not gonna name them out of respect, but this is a studio that works with clients like fucking Toyota, Nike, I don't know, Rolex, the, the big brands that everybody knows, okay? And this happened to me, and I told you guys about this story before, it includes Thomas Colin 3D, and this is why Thomas Colin 3D is a good friend of mine to this day, okay? So for those of you people who want to get into something similar, if you want to work at a studio, like I know a lot of you guys do, if you want to get the dream job, this is how it goes down. So this is what you're going to have to go through. Here's what happened to me. I was doing a live stream one day, making content. This is why I always tell people you got to make content. If you're a 3D artist and you're not making content, why the fuck aren't you making content? What's the point of doing this if you're not going to put it out there? I'm making content. I'm just doing a live stream, like modeling something. The reason I do these live streams, you guys know my channel. I don't do this to get views. You guys know my shit doesn't really get any views anyway. The reason I do these live streams is so I can talk to people for this exact reason, what I'm about to tell you, okay? And you should have the same mindset when you're going around life. I mean, this is the shit that's gonna get my channel deleted because I just do. I just go here to talk to people and have genuine conversations, which is why I'm gonna get banned because when somebody asks me about the Holocaust, you know what I say. But besides the point, I'm just over here making a live stream, talking to people, and here's Thomas calling in the chat. Is anybody here a professional 3D artist who can tell me how my skills are? And I'm just curious, you know, what do you think? There's Thomas calling. Yeah, I'm a pro. Your modeling is good. And he stays in the chat. We, we stay chatting a little bit. We're talking. We get into contact. We're, I think, I don't know, we go to Instagram or fucking whatever, into Discord or something. And we're chatting. We become friends. Thomas Colin and I. And Thomas Colin, at this time, Thomas Colin is much older than I am. At this time, he's already spent years working at a studio, Okay. So he's already in the game, he's already in the, in the industry. And we're talking, and now he's a, a mod on my Discord server at this time. And I convinced Thomas Colin, I tell him, listen, you should start making some videos. Because especially at the time, I'm telling him, dude, you're better than me. You should have more fucking subscribers than me. So he did, he started making some videos, YouTube tutorials and shit like that. And as he started growing a little bit, as he started getting some traction, one day he gets a company that reached out to him. I don't know where they found him. I mean, they probably found him through YouTube. I don't know where they contacted him. I don't know if they contacted him on email, on art station. It doesn't fucking matter. They found him because he was posting shit online again, okay? And this is how I found Thomas Colin, by posting shit online, which is why you should be posting shit onto the internet. And they tell him, hey, you want a job? We saw you, whatever. Do you want to work at this studio? And Thomas Colin, like I said, he already had a job, so he doesn't need a job. But he told me, hey... These people reach out to me. They want to hire me. They've got a job position. I don't want the fucking job because I got a job out here. If you want, I'll give them your contact. I'll send them your portfolio. So he sends them my portfolio. I say, of course, yeah, why not? It'd be pretty fucking cool. And he sends them my portfolio. He sends them my contact. So here they are. They reach out to me. And we get to know a little bit about this company. We turn, we, it turned out that this is a pretty good fucking company to work at. So here's Thomas Cohen. All of a sudden, you know, I want, I, it would be kind of cool if he worked here as well. If we worked together, you know, it was a pretty damn good studio. If we work together, there'll be nice content, nice uh, shit to talk about. It'll be an interesting experience. So we went in it together because it turns out they had two open positions for some huge project that they had to work on. I don't know what exactly it was. I can't remember. This was a long time ago. And what happens is now, after a couple emails, now you book a meeting. And this is a company that I believe is settled mainly in Europe, in three big cities in Europe. Or maybe it was two big cities in Europe and one big city somewhere else. I'm not going to tell you too much about this. I remember what some of the cities were, but I don't want to tell you because then you guys going to be able to figure out what the fucking studio is, which I don't want. Because I'm saying this shit over here in a way that I don't know if, if they would like uh, if, they would, if they would like me. If they would like people to know that they had anything to do with me. Okay, because look at me. But anyway, uh, now it's time to set up a little interview. So here I, here I am talking to some chick. I think she was a Russian chick. I don't know where she was. Uh, she, she was blonde, okay? She was really nice, but she wasn't a 3D artist, I think. She was just like HR. She was just talking to you about the basic shit. You know, how did you find out about the job? Uh, where do you live? What kind of, what are your salary expectations and all this shit? Can you do this and that? Are you familiar with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just basic shit. Nobody can fail this. The reason they're asking you this is, first of all, they want to see if you're fucking retarded because they don't want to uh, hire you if you're fucking crazy. They want to see if you're a normal person. And the second reason is they want to know if they can afford you. So they ask your salary expectations because then you're going to lowball yourself. If you're a beginner, you're going to lowball yourself. And then they're going to pick the one out of, all the, out of all the candidates. They're going to go with the people who 
uh, chose lowest salary, okay, who priced themselves lowest, because why not, of course, that's only the logical thing to do if they all got the skill or the same skill level. So we get through the interview, okay, everything's good. You passed, Thomas Collin, you passed, all right. So now comes the next phase where they start testing your skills. And this is where things got pretty fucking interesting because now they give you, um, they send you some things that you have to model. I don't know, it was like a piece of a motorcycle seat. Then there was something out of a CAD modeling pro program. It was clearly exported out of a CAD program. It was like a piece of a fork of a motorcycle. And it was like three pieces of a motorcycle or something like that. You got this much time to model these. Here are the rules. It's got to be quads only. You know, perfect hardcore topology shit. No creases allowed, all this. You know, the, the usual topology uh, rules that they play by. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn more about the type of shit that they're going to ask for, I put it together, a document. It's free, completely for free. You can download the fucker in the description, in the comments. I'll put it down there so you can get it. So you can know that uh, about these topology things that they want you to know, all right? Because most people don't talk about this because it's not interesting, but I put everything in one place so you guys can go download it there. And now they, they want you to make this by the rules, one by one. And then now we're in a Discord channel. Me, Thomas, I don't know, I think it was a couple other guys. And the main guy who's running the show, the main guy who's you know supervising us, he's checking if we can do this the way we're supposed to do this. And he's your point of contact from now on. I think he's like a team leader or something, or at least a leader of the hiring, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter. So now we're working on this project and something happened. I just want, we just wanted to ask the guy a simple question. It was something like, uh, we need a little bit more time for the force because you said five hours. There's no way this is going to take a little bit more time. Okay. And me and Thomas spoke about this. We agreed that, you know, this is fucking reasonable to ask for more time. But the problem was that it was something about the way that this fucker spoke to us. Something about the way he responded to us. I can't remember exactly what it is that he said, but I remember it just felt, it just felt degrading. It just felt inconsiderate. And I'm somebody who has a big problem with this type of stuff. I'm big on respect. If you treat me like I'm below you, we got nothing to talk about. You're not my boss. Even though you have a higher position in this company than me, you're not my fucking boss. My boss is Jesus Christ. My boss is God himself. You're not Jesus Christ. So we're on the same fucking level. Okay. If you want to talk to somebody like they're below you, it ain't going to be me. I'm that kind of guy. I'd rather be broke on the street than allow somebody to talk to me like that. And I think that everybody should be the same way. Thomas Collin too. He's got a fucking job already. He doesn't need a job. He doesn't need nobody talking to him like that. Okay. So we decided, you know what, man, fuck these people. I don't want to work here. I don't want to uh, be a slave. I'd rather just be here making fucking videos, cussing on the internet, you know, and I'm doing my own thing, traveling the world, doing whatever the fuck I want to do because that's the life I prefer to live. I don't want to work in a fucking studio, have somebody tell me what to do and be a slave, working nine to five. Even if it's remote work, you're still working for somebody. Else. You're making somebody else money. Somebody else is taking advantage of your labors, giving you a fixed hourly wage, extracting as much as they can from you. So they can make money. You're just an asset for them to make money. How are you not a fucking slave? They, they tell you what to do, when to do it, when to be there, how to act, what you're allowed to think, what you're allowed to say, how you're supposed to dress. For the most part, this is just straight up fucking slavery. And I know people get mad when you say this, but that's what it is. Okay. So this is why we decided to just tell these people. I mean, we just disappeared because we didn't want the fucking job. But now I got a story that I can tell you guys how to get a job at a fucking studio. In short, you got to get your skills together first that's step number one you gotta make sure that you can use the program build a nice profile on the internet this is what we teach inside the digitally enhanced club this is what the digitally enhanced club is all about put together a nice fucking portfolio and now you're just making content and talking to people networking with people just put your shit out there as much as possible and before you know it you're gonna have somebody who's gonna help you find a job who's gonna help you find some clients who's gonna help you get in touch with the kind of people that you want to be in touch with so that's how you get a job at a fucking studio i'll see you guys in the next one